the most fascinating aspect of the market is a concept called as the corner. Corner is a situation where an individual or an institution owns all of the outstanding shares of a particular stock or commodity. And by doing so, they control the entire market for that stock. All of the short sellers now in a trap, they have to pay a price, whatever the individual or the institution demand. Just to clear the concept, short sellers are the people who leverage the market, who borrow money and they sell commodity which they do not own. In the anticipation, the prices will go down and they will buy. And when they buy, they will pocket the difference. I'm going to give three examples of corner today and hope you like what you hear. The first is back in the day in the year 1666 when Wall Street was about 40 years young and gentleman with the name Frederick Philip, he cornered the entire market of wampum. He took his wife's money and he found an opportune time to take wampum to his godown. And just to recall, wampum was the unit to trade used by Indians. Uh, those are nothing but clamshell. And he made a fortune out of it. But the example I'm going to go a little detail is the second one, which is where the gentleman already almost cornered the market, but was halted by Wall Street. Uh, and rules were changed just to make sure that the market is not cornered. Although corner was perfectly legal at that point in time. So the gentleman I'm talking about is Clarence Saunders. Uh, he comes from a very poor background in Virginia, West Virginia, and he worked up his rank and he opened his first supermarket concept uh, back in the day in 1912. Uh, before that, you know, people have to walk into a store uh, for grocery, they have to give a list to the clerk and clerk will get everything back to the person. He made sure that people can roam around just like how we do in, in superstores these days. And he grew and his business grew and he made a lot of fortune out of it. By the year 1922, he was listed in Wall Street. He had about 1200 store, uh, most of them owned by them, most by, owned by him and some of them were um, owned by franchisees. A strange phenomenon happened in the fall of 1922. Some of his franchisee owner in New Jersey, Connecticut and New York, for no reasons to his store, his store name by the way was Piggly Wiggly, started, um, uh, started to bankrupt. And because of that, some of the beer raiders saw a great opportune time to raid the market, to bring the price down and make money, the short seller concept, which I told you before. Saunders was livid when he saw that and he wanted to teach the Wall Street boys a lesson in their own game. So what he did was he loaned about $10 million, which is amounting to 150 million today. And he went out in the market to buy all the stocks of all the shares of Piggly Wiggly. By the December of 1922, he owned 50% of all the stocks. There were 200,000 stocks outstanding. 100,000 was owned by him, and the stock actually climbed up from $39 in the fall of 1922 to about $60 by the end of December. He continued buying the stocks, and by March of 1923, he had 99% of all the stocks available. The short sellers and the brokers were panicking. The stock has skyrocketed to $124, and at that point in time, the Wall Street realized that there is a corner situation happening. To tell you honestly, Saunders was not even a Wall Street boy. He didn't even know he was cornering until he realized by his own action that he was cornering the market. What he did was that he realized that if he goes out in the market and starts selling the stock, now the price will go down. So what he did was he devised a very unique concept by privately putting ads on paper by saying that people can buy stock privately from him at a $55 a piece and can make a fortune out of it. He was completely in control and on March 24, 1923, he thought of making a call. The rule at that point in time was whenever, you know, the stock is controlled and the lender wants the money back, uh, you need to pay the money back in 24 hours. So he made $250 as the price take and he called his people, or all the brokers and short sellers to pay him back. By rule, he should have been paid, but Wall Street ganged up and they thought, you know, this is not right. So first they said, we are going to uh, put the stock, um, you know, uh, will halt all the trading because of that the price already went down to $82. And then they suspended the stock for the next four days, giving enough time for the brokers and the short sellers to find ways and means to come out of it. So what they did was they started finding out people who were owning the stock. You know, they remember the one person he didn't own was owned by a lot of other people so that he can buy those stock from those, uh, you know, retired people, old people and bring those stocks back in the market and liquidate the whole situation. Saunders was getting frustrated and he was played against by the big boys. He put the price down to 150, no one bought. At the end, he settled for $100. While he made a big fortune out of it, 
but he borrowed a lot of money. So he could only pay half of it, about five million, and was still having five million outstanding money to be paid to his lenders, because of which later on he became bankrupt and was also removed from Piggly Wiggly, the, um, the superstore that he has formed, he was out of it. Well, that's a story of Saunders and very sad affair of how he was played against. Mind it, today in today's era, uh, Connor is first of all not allowed legally. Second, because of all the technological advancement, it is very hard to corner all the stock. You'll be caught before you do that, and it is also illegal. But in 1980, the Hunt brothers, who are uh, who had a lot of fortune from the oil business, they thought of cornering the silver, a commodity. And because silver at that point in time, one ounce was getting sold for about dollar and twenty-five cents. So what they did was they started buying all of the silver in the market. So because of the silver price going up, uh, there, there were a lot of mining around silver is not happening. But what he did was he started buying all the silver and on paper value become a billionaire by accumulating all. But again, at the same time, he's leveraging the market. He borrowed a lot of money. What he didn't realize was that when the silver price was almost hitting $50 for $1 uh, an ounce of $50 in an ounce, the people uh, eyes got wide open. See, mines got again active. Uh, people were finding things in their home which were made of silver and they were melting it so that they can bring it back to the market and sell it. And the silver price cl started climbing down to a point that, uh, you know, uh, Hunt brothers were bankrupt and they have to take protection from the lenders. So there's a story on Connor. I hope you like uh, what you heard. Um, and, uh, you know, in the current situation, there are no corner that is available. But back in the day, a lot of corner, uh, at least in the Wall Street, had happened, which are worth note for. Thank you for listening. And please leave behind your comment uh, if you like what you heard or anything that you want to share with me. Take care now. Bye.